Hi everybody, this is Canadian folk singer Jesse Ferguson back with a 10 year update on my homemade Appalachian or so called mountain dulcimer. So it can be called either or. Uh, if you've seen my video on the channel, it's from around 10 years ago. I actually made the instrument in 2009. If you haven't seen that video, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to cover a lot of the same material here. But for those of you who have seen that video or would like to go back and check it out, uh, this time I'm going to give you my 10 year update on playing the instrument, some little modifications I've done on it. I'm also going to give you a, uh, a sound sample with better quality audio and video. So I'm going to record it with an actual condenser mic through my uh, digital recording studio and I will splice that into this because in my earlier video I didn't have all that stuff and so it's kind of hard to get a sense of the sound of an acoustic instrument off a uh, camera microphone which is what I'm using to record this part but I'm going to switch to proper condenser microphone and also a piezo uh, pickup which I just recently installed so we're going to try that out and see what the sound is like I've already fooled around with the piezo a little bit. Um, I have my doubts that it's a magic fix for uh, amplifying this instrument, but uh, at any rate. So the Mountain Dulcimer, or Appalachian Dulcimer, uh, some people have called it a truly American instrument, uh, obviously from the Appalachian Mountain region in the United States. Uh, other people have disputed that, saying it's based on other European instruments, certain zithers or lyres and so on. Uh, I'm no musicologist, I don't know a whole lot about the history of this instrument other than that it does have a very long tradition, an important tradition uh, in American folk music, which I do like to play uh, in addition to European folk music. And one of the main reasons I made it was that it's one of the easiest stringed instruments you can make yourself at home. As you can see, it's, it's relatively boxy. So I grew up uh, the son of a woodworker. He had a great woodworking shop, and my father-in-law also has a great woodworking shop now. So I had access to tools and materials to make one of these, and I thought, what's one of the easiest instruments you could make and still play along with it? And it was interesting to try out an instrument for the first time. I'd never seen a dulcimer in person before I made one. So how did I find out about this instrument? Well, it was largely from this book, which is called... Folk Instruments to Make and Play, Simple Folk Instruments to Make and Play. The authors are Eileen Hunter and Marilyn Judson. And this book was published in 1977, and I got it from my local library here in Cornwall. And I looked through it and saw lots of different instruments to make, and I asked myself, what's an instrument I could re really see myself playing uh, because I can sing to it, my main my main musical instrument is my voice, basically. I'm primarily a singer, and the other instruments I use are more just to accompany my singing. So what kind of an instrument could I make? That would be fairly easy to do, not cost a lot of money, um, and that would allow me to sing along with. So I came up with that. So I am going to put up some scans of these pages that show the dimensions on how to make it. I don't own the copyright to this material. I assume that the authors no longer have copyright in it, or if, you know, basically this is in the interest of promoting their book, uh, I encourage you to buy it. I actually went out and bought a copy myself uh, off a used book website called ABE Books. I think it cost me about $5 for the book and $5 shipping, so it's a good steal. And I plan to make some other instruments out of it as time permits. But I will, at the end of this video, I will put scans about the materials you need and the dimensions uh, and so on. So a good book, I advise picking up a copy if you can. Of course, there are people who will put you know, tutorials up on YouTube showing you step by step how to make it. That's not what I'm gonna do here. Um, you can see that unlike a lot of dulcimers, it just has a rectangular box, which is very easy to construct. So uh, in my original video, uh, or in my, when I originally created this, I had a few other little embellishments that I since removed. For example, I had a thistle-shaped piece here because I was really into my Scottish ancestry at the time. Um, and I also had thistle-shaped sound holes cut out elaborately with a uh, coping saw. 
but they since, because of the little sharp points on them and so on, they started to break the little points. So I just turned them into circles because I thought it looked better than having broken pieces. Plus, one of the things I liked about this instrument was that you could just shove it in a book bag or a, a backpack or something like that and it would fit in there and not get damaged too easily. It's kind of a robust instrument as a lot of folk instruments are. Not very bre uh, breakable and so on. So uh, that's one, also one reason why I shortened it on here, taking off that decorative piece, just making it more compact and more durable. So the other bit that I did as an update uh, 10 years on, uh, I'll show you, is I made a custom box for it whenever I was moving from Canada's east coast to my home province of Ontario. So it's not very fancy. I just went to the hardware store and bought a half sheet of 1 8 inch plywood. Actually, I think it's quarter inch plywood. Some hinges and a little clasp mechanism. And there's a kind of a, a Native American style paint job on there that I did. I had no access to a table saw for this, so this was all cut with a handsaw. This was living in an apartment. And on the inside, I padded it with some fake fur and some foam from a, a seat cushion. And the idea was to have a durable box to move with. And so there you have it. So that's one little bit of an update. Uh, it cost me not too much because I had the wood. Actually, no, I don't know what it cost. Maybe $50 for the whole thing because I had to buy the half sheet of wood and the hardware. It's enough, but it's cheaper, and you can't really walk down to your local music store and buy a uh, dulcimer case, for, especially for a rectangular one. So you pretty much had to make it yourself. So that is the 10-year update. Um, how much do I play this instrument? Well, to be honest with you, it's something that I put on the wall and leave it there as a nice decoration, and once in a while, I'll get you know around to playing a few songs on it. Sometimes I'll go weeks where I play this more than I play a guitar. Right now I'm in that kind of a phase. I thought of doing this update video for you folks. So, but other times I might go months, even a year, not actually playing it. It's just there as a decoration on my wall. Um, for one thing, it's not very loud. For another thing, uh, the guitar is just more versatile in terms of the songs you can play on it. So my, my main instrument is a guitar. My secondary one is the mandolin. This would be third or fourth. But I am glad that I made it. I've had a lot of fun. I've had fun showing it off to people. My original video on this on this instrument is one of my top videos on my channel. So I figured there would be some interest in people seeing a 10 year update on it, especially with some improved audio. I'm gonna bring the camera closer now where you're not gonna see my face, but you will see the way I hold the instrument and I'll show you a little more close up the way that I play it, which in the previous video that I put up on my channel, uh, I didn't do that because I just had the camera at this distance the whole time, basically. So with that, I'm going to cut now to a close-up of me playing it and also some higher quality audio recordings, including I'm going to do one with the condenser microphone recording it, then with the piezo alone, and then I'll do with them combined and let you hear what that sounds like. One big problem I had with this instrument when I was trying to record myself while playing it was that it's very quiet and it had no pickup for uh, a direct line into my audio interface. So with the piezo, I'm hoping it will solve that problem, but it's not a perfect solution, I don't think, because it picks up all kind of other rattles and sounds and so on when you're playing. But you'll see that in the, in the footage. So I'll bring you back after for another little shot like this and uh, we'll finish the video that way. Thanks. So here we are back with the close-up. You get to see my hairy legs and knees, um, somewhat unavoidable. And I'm going to show you a little bit more. Uh, this is just the camera audio, by the way, now. I haven't switched to bringing in the condenser or the piezo uh, microphones, or pick up as they are. Uh, this also gives you a little bit of a closer view of the instrument, too. You can see the construction methods. This wood at the end was more purple when it was made. It's called purple heartwood. And the nut is also made of that up here, but it's since in the 10 years sort of browned. Um, one update I did from the previous time was to put a little screw eye with a string here so that I can hang it from a hook on the wall. Another update that I did, which I didn't mention in the far uh, zoomed out ver uh, part of the video, was that there was a problem with the intonation on this fret. 
which means that when you press it, it sounded a bit flat. So I actually cut this fret wire, which is just paperclip uh, wire. I cut it and moved a piece over using digital tuner to get it where it would sound proper. So that was one change that I did, I believe, since the first video. And uh, it, to, to people who have a well-trained ear, you're going to see that the tuning is not absolutely perfect on this. Um, it's a homemade instrument with paper clips for frets uh, done by an amateur uh, luthier. So uh, I think it's playable. I think I have a pretty good ear, um, but some people might find it a bit hard to listen to. Certain notes are not 100% pitch perfect. I think partly too because this is a uh, diatonic scale on here, which means it doesn't have all the half tones, the semitones. So on a guitar you would have more frets, in other words, you'd have a fret here, a fret here, a fret here, and so on. But here you have these long stretches between frets, and sometimes if you press too hard it changes the pitch. If you press really hard it changes it. Um, but I think I've got it where, with this adjustment, that I can play it and it doesn't offend my ears too much. I think it's, you know, it's a simple folk instrument, homemade, and uh, I think that, it, you know, some of that rustic charm maybe is, is all right. So, how do you play it? Well, traditionally, according to that book anyway, you played it with a dowel or a noter, and you would put it just on the two front strings, right? These are tuned D, A, D. So the two front strings are both D, then A, then D. So those are the two drones. The melody string, you put a, a, a dowel on it. This is the traditional way, which I don't like. And you slide it up and down. Uh, the reason I don't like it as much is that you get a lot of this kind of sliding sound, which some people might like as part of the charm. But the, the main reason is that it's not a very fast way to, to play a melody. Uh, whereas if you use your fingers, you can, you can get a big span between two fingers and so on. But uh, traditionally that's the way it was done apparently, at least by uh, the majority of people. So that's the noter dowel. I, this is just a stick I cut off a branch somewhere, uh, actually part of a... Uh, a bushcraft project I was doing. Now I don't normally play with these two things. And then the other thing was instead of a pick uh, or just your fingernail, which you could use, uh, they would use a stiff bird feather as the strumming thing. Now I just actually dug out a feather that I found on the ground just now and I never even tried it with this feather. I tried it with the noter, which I didn't really like. But let's hear what that sounds like. So you cut off and leave a stiff one. This happens to be a goose feather I found on the ground after the geese were molting one year. So apparently this is the traditional way. Well, I can tell you I really don't like that clacking sound. I much prefer using uh, my fingernail if I had to do that. So that's the way I do it. I use a modern guitar pick, so I'm going to dispense with the dowel and the feather now and just do it the way I actually do it. One thing you'll find if you start to play this instrument, you get one, is that it sliding around on you is a problem. So depending on whether you're wearing pants or not, or if the pants are slippy, uh, it can be a problem where the thing will be moving around. I usually play on a different chair where there I can put my foot up on one of the rests. I like that a little bit, so the, 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 the instrument is angled down. But what I like to do, I don't like having it square to my body or parallel to my shoulders. I like having it a little bit off like this, so more towards the, the knee. And you'll see, obviously, I'm right-handed, so I do it just like a guitar. If I was playing guitar, I would play the melody with my left hand uh, and strum with my right. So that's the way I like to do it. If you're left-handed, you might want to reverse your dulcimer. So for, for melodies, said I'm going to bring in a condenser microphone and let you hear what it sounds like a little bit better but 
for this portion, I'm mostly just showing you how I hold the instrument. For chords, uh, I use my thumb in addition to the fingers. So this would be a D, G, A. So this gives you a little sample of what it sounds like over the, uh, the camera microphone. And now I'll cut away and give you the sample first of just the condenser mic, then just the piezo pickup, uh, and then a blend of the two. And you'll see uh, the, best, the best mix that I was able to get probably would, uh, is the mix of the two, emphasizing the condenser microphone. So that's how you hold the instrument. And as you can see, it's pretty quiet. Uh, so whenever I put it through the, uh, the digital audio interface on my computer, I'm gonna have to obviously turn it up a lot more than I would with a guitar. I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's not even half the thickness of a guitar. Uh, it's you know, similar to a mandolin in terms of the sound you get out of it in terms of volume level. Um, obviously, this, mine is made out of plywood, which doesn't vibrate as nicely as a solid slab of hardwood, but that's what I had to work with. So, without further ado, I will cut away now and bring you back with the condenser microphone audio. And here's the sample of just the condenser microphone. So that is an MXL V67 condenser microphone, in case you're curious about what type of microphone it is. Now I'm going to bring you back with the piezo only. And here we are with the piezo and condenser microphone combined. So here we are back for the closing of the video. I'll mention that the piezo microphone I got is a low quality one. It was about $4 shipped from eBay, uh, delivered straight from China. So if you had a better quality piezo microphone, uh, pickup that is, it conceivably could sound better than that. But I have heard from other guys who make videos about uh, cigar box guitars that piezo microphones have that kind of gritty, raw, uh, rough kind of sound picking things up if you grind your finger on it or if it rubs against your pants you will hear things like that um, whereas a proper guitar humbucker style uh, uh, pickup will have a more mellow rounded tone now you can fix some of that in the uh, in post-production 
uh, in terms of you know adding more low low balance to the sound and so on. But uh, overall, I, I don't think this is the magic solution I've been looking for. Really, what I think is probably best is two condenser microphones, one for the vocal, one for the the instrument, uh, small diaphragm condenser microphone, which I don't have currently, um, but uh, I may invest in in the future. So that's it for my 10-year update on the Appalachian dulcimer. As I said at the end of this video, I'm going to put in some scans of the pages that show you how to make one of these. One uh, difference that I did on mine is I doubled the D string or the, the noter string uh, to have a, a double series like a mandolin. That's common on a lot of dulcimers. Uh, in the Simple Folk Song Books uh, scan that I'm going to show you, they only put a single string on the front, the one that you play the melody on, boom, 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 boom. So uh, I advise doing that because as you'll see, it's already pretty quiet, this instrument, and you have the two drones in the back that uh, can kind of overpower the melody that you're doing. So if you double up that front string, then you get more power out of the melody to, over, to, to be heard over the drone strings. So that's something I would advise that you do, and then you have to have four machine heads rather than just three. So if you're trying to save money on machine heads, the tuning pegs, uh, then you can go with three, but I advise going with four. And that's it for the update. So stick around and you can pause the video to read the instructions on how to make one. And uh, if you're interested, you can go back and watch that video from 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago now, uh, to see when I first made it and how that sounds like and so on. So um, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.